Hello my fellow fish fans! I was in the middle of editing this video and I decided to refilm this intro just really really quickly because as I was editing it, it occurred to me that this video is the perfect tag video. So I don't know if tag videos are like a big thing in fish keeping. I don't think I've seen any tag videos, um, but it's quite common in some of my other channels that I have seen like makeup channels or parenting channels or all kinds of other areas of YouTube. So. This video was inspired by a video put out by Prestige Reef, uh, which is linked down below, talking about his first, his worst day in fish keeping, and um, I told my story in this video about the worst day I've ever had in fish keeping, but I think I want to turn it into a tag. So, if you have a fish channel, or even if you don't, film a video and tell us your fish horror story. What's the worst thing that's ever happened? Maybe you bought a hundred cart or a hundred neon tetras and they all got eaten by a goldfish, Corey. Or maybe you had a fish tank explode or a gar jump out of the tank, Joey. I don't know what it is, um, but I would love to tag a few people just off the top of my head, including those two, King of DIY, uh, Aquarium Co-op, but also um, solid Gold Aquatics, Creative Pet Keeping, I'm just going to list a bunch of them because I want you all to do it. So, uh, uh, Seahorse Whisperer, Coralfish 12G, um, Inappropriate Reefer, Prestige Reef, you already did this but I will link your video, um, Rachel O'Leary, gosh there's like a million more that I'm not even thinking of, Rotter Tube Reef, um, SC Reefer, CJ's Aquariums, everyone, whoever you are, if you keep fish, if you have a YouTube channel, Tell us your story. Tell us a story of your worst day in fish keeping. Um, and I'm going to turn this into a tag. So it'll be the my worst day in fish keeping tag. Um, and if you've done this video, let me know in the comments because I definitely want to check it out. I think that we all benefit from hearing each other's stories. Okay, so this is my intro. And then I'm going to, now I'm going to cut to my other, my other intro. Okay? Okay. I'm going to tell a story today. The story is my worst day in fish keeping. It happened very recently. I've honestly not wanted to film <laughs> a video about it. Um, it was really discouraging and honestly I almost quit the hobby altogether, at least the saltwater side of the hobby. But there was one video which I will link down below which I will credit with keeping me here. So um, a few weeks back I was uh, listening to YouTube as I frequently do. I really like to listen to fish channels as I clean or work out or drive or those kinds of things. Kind of treat them as you would like a podcast. And there's a few channels that I frequently follow and I've been really into saltwater lately. So uh, two of those channels that I absolutely love are Inappropriate Reefer, which I will link down below, as well as Prestige Reef. Um, Prestige Reef you may formally know as Miss Saltwater Tank. Um, she has left the channel, and he has taken it over. I miss her a lot, but honestly, the channel is just as good now as it used to be, and I'm really glad that he's picked it up, and I'm so glad that he filmed this video. So if you guys don't follow this, because I know not every one of my followers uh, watches all YouTube, all fish YouTube, or necessarily is into saltwater, um, we had a tragic loss not long ago, and Inappropriate Reefer lost his awesome uh, frogfish named Mochi, I think is his name. And Mochi was the coolest frogfish, he had him for about a year, and he was kind of like the, the channel's mascot, if you will. It was kind of like the main fish of the channel. So it was sad when he died. And um, I remember feeling really sad for him because it is always kind of upsetting when you lose a fish. And Prestige Reef posted this video, which is linked down below, as a response to it, where he talked about his worst day in fish keeping. And he talked about how fish keeping, especially saltwater fish keeping, can be very, very challenging. And there can be losses that we all experience, and it can be really discouraging, and it can cause people to lose their interest in the hobby. And little did I know when I was listening to that, that I, just how badly I would need it because later that day would be the worst day in fish keeping I have ever experienced. Um, so he, Prestige Reef was talking about 
when he had his tank crash and um, there was a power outage and he lost a whole bunch of his saltwater fish and it was very very sad I remember when that happened way back when it was still Miss Saltwater Tank and I remember her talking about it and he talked about how he didn't want to record it and how especially being on YouTube it can be really challenging because you know you're supposed to have your stuff together and I just really ended up kind of empathizing and relating to that so here's my story Last we checked in on the saltwater tank, I posted a video, all of my fish were in quarantine. I had a 20 gallon long quarantine tank and I was trying to be so careful, you guys. I was treating for ick, I was treating with hyposalinity, I was planning on, after going through hyposalinity, doing a second round of treatment with copper to help treat for uranema and velvet. I was doing fresh water dips for flukes. Uh, Proziquental also for flukes, uh, metronidazole for internal parasites, as well as um, formalin for Brooklynella. I wanted to have all of my bases covered because I'm in the middle of building this very large six foot aquarium. I'm so excited. I've never had a tank this big. It's going to be my first reef tank, which I'm intimidated by, but also really, really stoked about. Um, and it's taking longer than I expected it to because plumbing is taking a little bit longer to figure out. I've never had a sump before, so that's a little bit of a challenge. And we're also building the stand from scratch. But while I was in the middle of that build, I decided that I would go ahead and take all of my fish, put them in a 20 gallon long, and do this really thorough treatment because I wanted to make sure that every single fish that came into the system was healthy. And especially with such a large system, I just wanted to do it right the first time. So my fish had finished their entire uh, hyposalinity treatment, which means that they were all cleared for ick. Um, but then my mom's saltwater tank had this massive breakout of something in the tank. It was either ick or possibly Brooklynella. I wasn't really sure. Uh, Brooklynella is also known as clownfish disease. But we decided, you know what, we're going to do the right thing with these fish too. We're going to take all of them to my house. We're going to quarantine all of them together. I had just finished hyposalinity treatment. I was about to raise the salinity very slowly and start the copper treatment. So I was like, let's just do copper all together on all of the fish. So I drove to my mom's house, and as I'm driving to my mom's house, I'm listening on my phone. Don't worry, I don't watch while I'm driving, but I did listen to the Prestige Reef video and just thought it was the sweetest thing that he said um, to Inappropriate Reefer. Drive there, and I collect all of my mom's fish, and it was a little bit of a hassle. I had to completely take out every single rock. She had gobies that were hiding, and it was just a whole adventure to capture all these fish. But I captured all of them packed them all into my car, packed my kids back up, and went back to the house. Um, and then when I got to the house, I did freshwater formalin dips on all of my mom's fish. Um, and my daughter, who is five, I have uh, two daughters here, and my five-year-old, I feel like, is finally reaching an age where she can start to kind of be involved in fish keeping. She do obviously doesn't do like a complete, it's not like, entirely her responsibility. The majority of it is on me, but I want her to have fun and participate. Uh, fish keeping for me is a lot about family. When I think about fish keeping, I think a lot about my mom, and it's this generational thing that has been passed from my mom to me and now is being passed on to my kids. So it's really important to me to have them involved whenever possible, but also teach them about the importance of taking care of fish and how to do it. So I felt like my five-year-old is old enough now that she could participate in the freshwater dips with me and I was teaching her how to do them and it was a really cool experience for the two of us. So we did freshwater dips on everyone, we put them in the, the quarantine tank with all of my fish and we were getting ready to uh, start raising the salinity over the next few days so we could start copper treatments. Um, but while we were doing all of that she got really excited and then she wanted to feed the fish so I let her feed them. Then the crisis happened, and um, it's really hard to be a fish keeper on YouTube because uh, I find the internet to be just a very judgmental place when it comes to fish keeping. We're all trying our best, but often people forget that we're all learning constantly too. The internet can also be a very difficult place to be a parent, um, which I have learned over the last six years on my parenting channel as well. Uh, there's a lot of judgment of what parents do with their kids in general. 
So um, I didn't want to admit this because it is both my failure as a fish keeper and my failure as a parent, I suppose, because I can't be a perfect parent that this happened. But my two-year-old woke up from her nap and um, my five-year-old and my two-year-old were playing together and I went to the bathroom real quick. And my five-year-old wanted to show my two-year-old how she had helped mom feed the fish. Um, and so she was showing her, she scooted a chair up over to the, the counter, she climbed up up and she helped her sister climb up and she was like, look, here's the fish food, which I keep in the cabinet above the quarantine tank. And she fed the fish. And then um, my two-year-old wanted to participate, but a two-year-old doesn't quite understand the way a five-year-old does. So my two-year-old dumped an entire container, big container of fresh water, uh, fish flakes into the quarantine tank, which would have been bad enough, but that's a problem that is solvable. You remove as much of it as you can, 100% water change, those kinds of things. But then immediately following dumping all of the fish food into the fish tank, my two-year-old then dumped an entire container of bubbles into the quarantine tank. So this is a very small quarantine tank. It doesn't have the quantity of water that a larger tank would have. Um, Obviously, it's small out of necessity because it's a quarantine tank, and the bubbles just overflowed and immediately killed everything. And I'm in the bathroom, uh, and it's the kind of bathroom trip that takes a little bit of time, if you know what I mean, and all of a sudden, I hear my five-year-old yelling, don't do that, <sighs> which is just not what I want to hear while I'm on the bathroom because if any of you guys are stay-at-home parents or just parents in general, you know, you don't get privacy to go to the bathroom alone. But I hear my five-year-old yelling, don't do that. And then she comes busting in, opens the door. I'm sitting there and goes, um, mama, baby sister fed the fish too much. And I was like, what is happening? So I, you know, finish up my business as quickly as you possibly can and go into the kitchen to find that an entire bottle of bubbles and an entire container of fish food has been dumped into my quarantine tank and I start panicking. I'm trying to scoop everyone out because if you guys don't know, I have a 20 gallon long quarantine tank and then I had a 10 gallon quarantine tank as well, uh, one that I want to use for copper and one that I want to use for hyposalinity. So I'm trying to scoop everyone out and get them into the 10 gallon uh, quarantine, but it happened so fast those bubbles just killed everyone so if you're looking for additives to your tank I do not recommend bubbles um, the fish died all of them every single one my from my very first clownfish which were my very first saltwater fish that I ever owned to my mom's very first yellow goby or yellow watchman goby who had survived every single one of her mistakes and my mistakes as we figured it out so it was a really horrible day and for a long time I wasn't sure I wanted to get back into it. We had one living fish that had been in the 10 gallon tank when this happened. I completely took down the 20 gallon long. I took apart all of the filtration and the heater and everything that was on that tank. Um, I don't know if it's possible to clean the bubbles out but I don't even want to mess around with it. I took a deep breath. I cried. <laughs> And um, I think when those kinds of things happen, you have two options. Um, either you quit and you leave, or you buck up and you try again. And fortunately, because I had been listening to some other really amazing YouTubers that day, uh, specific shout out to Prestige Reef, but all of you, all of you have shared your trials and your tribulations, even though I totally understand not wanting to. Some of my favorite channels have had tank crashes from Solid Gold Aquatics, Prestige Reef, CJ's Aquariums, and even those that haven't had complete and total tank breakdown kind of experiences like this have had difficult things. So like Mile High Reefer has battled ick, Rotter to Reef has battled ick, and there's so many more that I'm not even thinking of telling in this story. But, um, and they shared their stories online and it made me think, okay, I can do this. And so as much as I didn't want to tell this story because I feel like it reflects poorly on me as both a fish keeper and a parent, I also recognize that other people being willing to be vulnerable and share their stories 
has helped me out a lot and helped encourage me to keep going when I was really discouraged. So the latest update is I went ahead and reset up a new quarantine tank. So I'm still running two quarantines. I have one 10 gallon quarantine that I use for hyposalinity and one 10 gallon quarantine that I use for copper treatment. And I'm going to very slowly rebuild my fish population. Right now in the copper tank, I have one fish for my mom. It is going over to her house today. Her tank has been sitting fallow throughout all of this because of course she lost all of her fish as well. Um, it sat fallow for several weeks to make sure that whatever was in there, be it brook or velvet or ick, is completely cleared out. Um, and I've set up a second quarantine tank and bought my first fish that's going to be the very first fish that I add to the 125 gallon build. Um, he has been in hyposalinity for a few weeks and I'm going to be moving him over to copper very soon and it is a one spot fox face. So he will be the first fish in my new build and um, I've picked up the pieces of the mess as it was and I do not recommend bubbles in case you are curious as any kind of reef tank additive and I guess at the end of the day I've just kind of learned we can't all be perfect parents all the time we can't all be perfect fish keepers all the time as long as you're learning and you're trying your best so um, we'll see what the future holds the 125 is in the middle of being built right now I have some plumbing parts that I need to exchange because I bought the wrong pieces and we're halfway through building the stand it should be up very soon um, be sure to hit the bell and hit always get notifications so you can see updates of what's going on in the saltwater tank and I'd love to hear from you guys what experiences have you had with fish keeping that has kind of been discouraging for you and what has made you make a comeback because I definitely have made a lot of mistakes I've kept fish for as since I can remember and I've honestly probably made more mistakes than I've been successful but I just keep trying so anyways I'll talk to you all soon thanks for watching bye guys